war crimes, and WikiLeaks. Among the maniac right, calls have come for the assassination of Julian Assange of WikiLeaks fame. Some have called for his quick arrest for violation of U.S. anti-spy laws, extradition, trial, and conviction. Although the din may have died down somewhat, U.S. government officials are livid with the Australian, with some issuing dark threats. If WikiLeaks is guilty of anything, it's failing to abide by the unwritten rules followed by much of the corporate press, that of keeping state secrets. The catcalls for Assange's prosecution are startling, given the seas of silence on the prosecution of U.S. government officials for war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. In fact, the war itself was a brazen violation of international law for it violated the UN declaration against attacking a nation that did not harm the attacker. Thus, the war was a war crime. This even if the U.S. didn't torture people, kill civilians, destroy historic sites, and shatter nations on false pretexts. Alan Greenspan, former head of the Federal Reserve, said recently what millions already knew. The Iraq war is largely about oil. And yet, Former President George W. Bush and his complete cabinet are not facing war crimes charges, as if the U.N. has an idiocy exception to violating international law, as in, oops, no WMDs? Sorry. Millions have gone into exile. The nation is carved into ethnic ghettos. Hundreds of thousands are dead, and the infrastructure has been bombed into dust. And there are no violations of international law? Apparently not, for the aggrieved were just Arabs. Former finance professor Edward Herman and journalist David Patterson in their 2010 book, The Politics of Genocide, noted how international law judges and lawyers ignored violations by certain powers. Just as the guardians of international justice have yet to find a single crime committed by a great white northern power against peoples of color that crosses their threshold of gravity, So, too, all the fine talk about the responsibility to protect and the end of impunity has never once been extended to the victims of these same powers, no matter how egregious the crimes. The Western establishment rushed to proclaim genocide in Bosnia, Herzegovina, Rwanda, Kosovo, and Darfur, and also agitated for tribunals to hold the alleged perpetrators accountable. In contrast, its silence over the crimes committed by its own regimes against the peoples of Southeast Asia, Central America, the Middle East, and Sub-Saharan Africa is deafening. This is the politics of genocide. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio.